Sometimes in order for things to move up, there are certain things that have to come down. What I want to do today is share with you seven things that need to be decreased in order for your business to increase. Sometimes in order to see our businesses increase, we have to have certain things that need to decrease. There are certain things that maybe we need to do less of or completely eliminate that we're kind of almost gotten into a habit of doing. So what I wanna to do today is really break down seven of these areas that I think need to be decreased in your life and in your business that'll help you find that increase. The first thing is this, your ego must be decreased. You know, one of the things that holds the most people back that I see is, is they have this sense of maybe they know everything. Maybe you've been in this business for a little while and you've come to a place where you're like, you know, I just do my certain things and I just kind of grow the business. I really kind of understand how to do my business. The second you feel like you've got all this figured out is the time when your business begins to decline. What is it that you think, I just got this figured out? What is it that your ego tells you, you know what, I really don't need to learn anything new about my listing presentation because I pretty much get the most majority of the listings I go on. No, this is where we have to really understand that you still can grow, you still can be better, you still can be the person that your clients need in a new and a fresh way. Doesn't mean that we tear everything out that you've been doing, it means that we build upon it. What are those areas of your business that you know that you should learn a little bit more of? What is it that you should refine a little bit to get better? Is it your listing presentation? Is it your marketing? Is it understanding the new things that you should be doing to get the same results you've been having, but not just those same results, the next level results? You see, when we get to a place where we begin to understand that in order for us to go to that next level, we've got to take our ego and our pride out and humble ourselves in a way that we can learn some new things. The second way to see our business increase is to reduce the amount of wasted time we have. Listen, if you're coming into the office in the morning without your to-do list already planned out or a schedule of what that day is going to look like, you're falling behind. What is it that you do on a daily basis that reduces the amount of stress you have in your business? What is it you can do to make sure that you're not wasting more time when you could be effectively adding value to clients? couple quick things. I can look back on my business. I can remember times where I would come into the office and I would say, well, I want to generally do these things. And I would just come into the office and the distractions would come. Immediately, I would begin to check email. Maybe I'd look on social media. Maybe I would think about, oh, well, then maybe I need to plan out what these calls I'm going to do. I'm going to look up a few phone numbers or I'm going to do whatever it is. All of a sudden, I look up and it's lunchtime. Well, I got to get some lunch now. I mean, obviously, I mean, I can't sit here and make calls when I'm just hungry. And then I'd go to lunch and while I'm at lunch, I'd get a call from someone that there was something going on with a, with a inspection that happened. I need to run over to that house. And all of a sudden, by the time the day gets gone, and when I get to the end of the day, I've done nothing to move the ball forward. All I've done is react and waste time. Let me give you some tips on how you can do this. Before you leave every single night, um, before you leave the office, or before you go to bed if you're working from home or you're out of the office that day, make sure you're laying out the schedule with your day for the next day. Plan your day in a way. If you don't plan your day, I promise this business is going to steal it from you. Make sure you've got a certain amount of time that's scheduled for you that is written in ink that you're going to be making phone calls and prospecting and adding value to past clients. Make sure that there's a certain amount of time that you've got blocked out to prepare prepare for the appointments you have. Make sure there's a certain amount of time that you have blocked off for those appointments. You see, when we design our day and we begin to eliminate some of the time wasters that we have, all of a sudden we become more efficient. When we become more efficient, our results go up and that's one of those things that we can see as we reduce that, all of a sudden we see growth in our business that just compounds and compounds and continues to grow on a daily basis. The next thing that must decrease is your fear of the phone. You have to get really in a place where you're comfortable making phone calls. The understanding that the first call you make is going to be the toughest one each day. What is it that you do to prepare yourself and be ready? Can you set up the day before where you've got the phone numbers of the people you want to call? Can you have the property already talked about that you're going to circle prospect around that you're going to call and give owners details about? Can you make a list of who it is that are your past clients or in your sphere of influence you're going to call the next day. Can you prepare yourself in a way that takes the stress out? Most of the stress comes because we don't have control of the situation. We're worried about some, what something might do, so it holds us back. I promise right now, when we've had this historic run-up in values, when we've seen with the market moving the way that we've seen, 
People want the information you have. These are easy calls to make. Isn't it great to be able to pick up the phone, talk to someone and say, hey, just want to let you know that it was actually a house sold three doors down from you. Not sure if you saw the details, but your house has gone up in value. Then having the opportunity to really to get past making that and building those mo that momentum as you're having good conversations, all of a sudden when you get past the fear of making phone calls, you make more phone calls. What happens when you make more phone calls? You have more conversations. Conversations lead to conversion. And then we see our business begin to grow. If your business is going to grow, you've got to get to a place where you're not afraid of the phone. Number four is reduce your time in the office. You know, when I first started this business, we had a lot of floor time because people were coming in off of the street and they're walking into real estate offices needing help. It's not that way as much anymore. Now, if you're in a market, because we have some markets that we service where we do have walk-in traffic, make sure you're taking advantage of that. But I promise you, if you're not on floor duty, you need to be where the people are. Where are the people? They're out in the community. Be involved in your community, get involved with a charity or a local organization. They're out there in the community doing certain things. If you set up in a coffee shop, you've got more likelihood to run into someone that you have as a, that's in your sphere of influence or a past client or someone that you just overhear a conversation that you can interject in that's possibly looking to buy or sell real estate. This is completely flipped from the way it used to be. When I first started, you needed to be in the office. That was where you needed to be. Now, you've got to be wherever that is in your community that the people are. And by being where they are, listen, I use this analogy all the time growing up here on this beach. If, you, if you're going to catch a wave, you got to be in the water. Wherever the water is in your marketplace, odds are it's not in your office. Yes, there is a certain amount of time that we need to be in the office. We need to get rejuvenated. We need to be around other agents. We need to be excited about that and get support. But ultimately, we need to be where the people are. Number five is eliminate useless marketing. What is it that you just do because that's what you assume you're supposed to do? Do you have somebody that is doing social media for you and you know you don't get any engagement? Stop doing it. You're really, you're killing the opportunity that you have through social media. Do you have a budget where you're buying online leads but you haven't converted one in six months? Stop spending the money on those things. Are you really focused on sending certain types of mailers that maybe aren't working? Whatever it is. Take a data, go in and take the data that you have from the things you spent money and time on in your marketing and literally look and see have they, how, what, a, what part of your business have they generated. If you find that there are certain things that have been generating the majority of the business, do more of that. If you find certain things, and I'll promise you, listen, every single person spends time and effort on things that are not getting results. This is a part of growing, so we have to test things. But by under, understanding that those things are things that are not moving your business forward and eliminating those, you're leaving room for those things that actually will help your business. Number six of the things that have to decrease in order for you to increase is your time spent with buyers versus listings. Um, listen, right now we've been coming out of this and a lot of times when you're first starting the business, it's a lot easier to work with buyers because really you're just helping them find a place. On the listing side, you gotta have some skill. You gotta have the ability to understand how to negotiate. You gotta understand marketing a listing, which no one's had to do in the last few years, but it's changing right now. You have to be able to communicate with a homeowner in a way that gives the value to them that yet they know and they have confidence that you're going to be the person that's going to maximize their price and reduce the amount of stress they have through this process. You see, literally it does take a little bit of a time, but if you can develop the skill of working with listings, I always say it this way, if you're spending the majority of your time working with buyers, you're a real estate salesperson. If you're spending the majority of your time working on real estate listings and helping homeowners sell their homes, you've got a real estate business. Decrease the amount of time you're spending with buyers. Increase it with listings and I promise your business will grow. Last but not least, eliminate your passivity. What is it that you know that you should be doing but you just kind of delay doing? What is it that you know in your business if you did? Maybe it's doing more video. Maybe it's learning social media. Maybe it's farming a neighborhood. Maybe it's having a past client event. Whatever it is for you. What's the thing that when I say, what is it you should really be doing for your business? odds are you just thought of it. Do that thing. Eliminate the passivity. Eliminate the time that you're spending. Talk about doing something and start doing that thing. The biggest way to find results is to take massive action. What is it in your business that you've kind of been holding back on that you can really move forward in an aggressive way to make sure that you're eliminating that passivity and you're going to see that business grow? There's certain things that we do in our business that really we just get into a habit of doing. And when we take the time to understand what are those things that we're doing that really aren't generating a lot for our business, 
and for us as human beings? What are those things that we can begin to eliminate or decrease? When we find those things that we eliminate or we decrease, all of a sudden we make room for new and fresh growth. Find those things, those that we just talked about. Also, identify the areas of your business that are working well and lean into those. If you'll do these things, I know that I know your business can't help but grow. Hope this has been helpful and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. I specifically chose the video below for you because it builds on the one you just watched. I hope it's helpful and I'll talk to you soon.